We welcome you to Calvary Lutheran Church in Solana Beach, California. We're glad you're joining our worship today. This Sunday's image of the life the risen Christ shared with us is the image of friendship. We are called to serve others as Jesus came to serve. But for John's gospel, the image of servanthood is too hierarchical, too distant to capture the essence of life with Christ. Friendship captures the love, the joy, the deep mutuality of the relationship into which Christ invites us. The Greeks believed that true friends are willing to die for each other. This is the mutual love of Christian community, commanded by Christ and enabled by the Spirit. spoke a word and you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god oh it chases me down fights till i'm found leaves of 99 i couldn't earn it i don't deserve it till you give your away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God yeah. when I was your foe still your love fought for me been so so good to me when I felt no way you paid it all for me you've been so so kind to me Don't deserve it till you give yourself away. Down, 
Our gospel for this Sunday comes from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. On the night of his arrest, Jesus delivers a final testimony to his disciples to help them in the days ahead. Here, he repeats the most important of all commands, that they love one another. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commands, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends 
if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. And I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Now for the prayers. Beloved God, Heavenly Mother and Father, we thank and praise you for our mothers and for all those women who have served in that role. They join with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life and caring for us through all our joys and tribulations. We ask you to bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, and mothers who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creation, all creatures of the land and sea and sky, borrowing and burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches so that we can work together to bring about your kingdom on earth. Encourage Calvary Lutheran to reach out to our neighbors and find common cause. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the people of the world may live in peace. Inspire them to work together to tackle global issues, including the pandemic, especially in India these days, and the climate change. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially Dan and Barb and Rosemary, Sida and Sis. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I share the message, I'd like us to share in prayer. Father, open our hearts, our souls, and our minds. And may your word speak to us. All this in your name, our Lord Jesus. Amen. First, I want to read to you from... Um, We'll actually read the text again, but in a different version of it. And it's by, uh, it's called The Message. And it kind of brings the meaning across more. Because you kind of look at this text and you go, abide, what does that mean? And you, all these things that's going on, and you and me, and I and you, and joy complete. Well, hear this translation of this. Jesus says, I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourself at home in my love. I love that. Make yourself at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. This is my command, love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master's thinking and planning. No, 
I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything. Check that out. Everything I've heard from the Father. You didn't choose me. Remember? I chose you. Like that. You didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit. Fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bears, bears, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. Remember the root command, love one another. Oh, there's so much going on in here. I mean, just the fact of being called a friend. Now, I, I still have, I have friends. My dad's kind of envious of me. Um, he, he doesn't, uh, he goes, he's amazed that I have friends all the way back from sixth grade that I still hang out with. And actually, that's Travis. And you know, it's funny how we became friends. I mean, we like were arguing all day and got in a big fight at the end of the day, you know, like meet me out in the back of the schoolyard. And so we got into a fight and then, I don't know, some other guy showed up and started fighting him. I got to leave, they both got in trouble. And then the following day, we put all everything aside and decided we were gonna be friends. I mean, in a way, he chose to be my friend and uh, and now we're still friends today. I mean, we're like, I'm 54 years old and it's pretty awesome having somebody know you that long. Pretty much most of my real close friends I've known since my youth group days at church. And being that close, well, we give up a lot for each other. Sometimes, we can even finish each other's sentences. Pretty scary. Or I know like my friend Ben Rothstein, he'll always say, Dan, I know you better than you know yourself. So imagine you're one of the disciples and you're, you're hearing this from Jesus because the pretty much, I think before that, maybe they might have felt that they were like more like servants or slaves. The word is doulos in Greek. Well, like it really means a lot. It's just doulos. But he says, friends. I can't imagine what their eyes were like that day when he said that. He said, you know, I don't consider you servants or slaves. I consider you friends. No matter of fact, you guys are my friends. So think about who's right there in front of the disciples. The one who created everything, the universe and so forth. God is in front of them saying, you're my friend. And friends do things, are willing to do things for their friends, like lay down their life. And you know what? He wasn't just words. He did. He laid down his life for the disciples. But where does this friend thing stop? I mean, this laying down lives. I mean, you look at, I mean, I was this morning, I was cleaning the cupboard uh, at home and talking with my wife. And I said, you know, what's really interesting. It's like he talks about like, loving one another and you know loving your friends but he goes one step beyond up on the cross he says father forgive them for they do not know what they're doing i mean his love goes even beyond that so what do we deal with day in day out i mean what does he want from us he's calling you a friend you know why he calls you a friend? Is because you listen to him. And if we listen and we're listening, we're going to know what he does. 
um, there's a saying, you know, you know, what would Jesus do? And uh, one of my professors in seminary couldn't stand it. I can't stand it either. I like more like, what did Jesus do? Or what Jesus did? Because that already shows me it. And what Jesus did is he loved when he shouldn't have loved, according to culture and so forth. He was very countercultural, actually, in the fact that he loved his enemy, even. Here at Calvary, a lot of things are going to happen for you guys. And you're going to have some difficulties. You're going to argue with each other. You really will. Because you all want the best for your church here, right? You're going to have an interim pastor coming in, or who's already here now by the time you hear what I'm sharing with you. And you know what she's going to need? She's going to need your love. So you're going to need to love her and encourage her and support her in prayer because she's going to be praying for you and supporting you. You might not always feel like it. Because you know what? The way that God loved Jesus, there was times where Jesus was probably going, all right, uh, where are you, God? I mean, God, you're having me do this. This doesn't feel comfortable. There's going to be things in your friendship that's not going to be comfortable. But you're going to be going through things that are necessary. And during these times of it being necessary, you're going to have to come to that, down to that root commandment, the one that holds everything together. You're going to need to love one another. And the only way you're going to be able to love one another is remembering what Jesus did. How he loves you. So let me ask you, your sins, are they more powerful than the blood and love of Christ? No. So all your sins are forgiven. Because he laid down his life and called you a friend. So how should you be? How do you get to be, matter of fact? You get to love. So during this time of change, time of taking a hard look at which way the church is going to be going in the future and what you need for your next pastor, remember that God chose God chose your interim. The interim didn't choose. God chose you. You didn't choose. And he calls you friends. So, during this time, I pray for all of you. And your interim pastor. That you all may know the joy of God's love. God's care, and that he guides you through this period of, well, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be challenging. But remember to love one another as he has loved you. Blessings upon you all. And I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for letting me be here. And I want to say thank you for your love your acceptance, your humor with me. And it's been fun being here. So thank you, friends. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love and that we love one another. That you've chosen us, we didn't choose you, and that you call us friends. May we live that out. All this in your name, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Take care, folks. Hope to see you again.
in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil light, now surrender, you are As we worship together as the family of God, we invite you to continue the tradition of building God's kingdom through sharing your time, talent, and treasures. You can mail your gifts to Calvary to the address shown on the screen, or you can come to our lovely Calvary campus where there's a drop box. Um, there's also a Give Plus app or you can find that on our website. And on our website, you can click the Give Now button. We're so glad you're here worshiping and we're thankful for everything. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Let us together gather in one by the Holy Spirit and let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. and Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we invite you to share Holy Communion with one another, with the bread using the words, the body of Christ given for you, and with the wine or the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you're not receiving communion, you can receive the sign of the cross in your forehead and remember that you are a beloved child of God. Let us receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I really